I sat down with Mel Gibson and Jim Caviezel on the set of The Passion during the editing and after the release of the landmark film. Here are some bits of our classic World Over interviews with Mel Gibson and Jim Caviezel. Mel, when you first started thinking about this movie, what was your first intention? What did you intend to do? To um, create an experience um, for an audience. Um, of the passion, as I as I imagined it, as I saw it, um, and uh, I used um, various source material, but mainly the Gospels, you know. Okay. And, uh, of course, um, other other material like the uh, writings of Anne Catherine Emmerich, you know, to um, to fill it out. Now, what do you mean by that? Define how much well, the, the the Gospels were the primary source, and Absolutely. what did you do with Emmerich? Um, it was just great for detail. And, and very thought-provoking passages. This is the Dolores Passion. Yes. Yeah. And um, so I, I, um, I use that as a backdrop of reading. And, uh, uh, and she doesn't contradict the Gospels anywhere. She just, it's just detail, such detail. Uh, you don't have to believe any of it, but it's uh, interesting to um, uh, juxtapose it against the accepted uh, for testimonies. Talk to me for a second about why you decided to restrict yourself to the 12 hours before his death. Why not the ministry? Why not the resurrection? Well, for me, that's the most effective part, is, is the sacrifice, the sacrificial aspect uh, of Christ. Um, and that's where it all comes to a head. And I think <clears throat> I've seen so many films where they do focus on those other areas, um, and they they get kind of long and drawn out, and I don't think that the renderings that I've seen, they're not very successful. They're Why usually not? pretty hokey. They got bad wigs and, uh, you know, really stilted acting, and, um, you know, the dialogue is like, you know, it's just, I don't know, it comes across as very stilted to me, and I never really bought any of it. I mean, it's like other renderings I've seen, and I'm not trying to, like, you know, tear strips off anyone. I'm just telling the truth here. They bore the hell out of me. And it's like, uh, uh, it's like looking at the story through the wrong end of a telescope. It's like far away. It's as if it isn't real. It's like it's a fairy tale or something. And I wanted to um, accentuate the reality and have it not be a fairy tale, but have it be real. And uh, as I believe that it is and was. This gestated within you for a good long time, 13 oh, yeah. years or so. For a long time, yeah. Give me the backdrop on that. I, w I was... Um, focused on the passion for a long time. It was my own personal meditation. And uh, I focused on that because I found it healing for me. Because like most of us, I mean, you get to a point in your life where you're pretty wounded by everything that goes on around you, mm -hmm. by, by, uh, by your own transgressions, by other people's, you know, I mean, just life is a, it's a kind of a, a scarring uh, thing. So. I used the, uh, uh, the passion as a meditation of healing myself. You know? And that's what, that's what first drew you to the project, and, the, uh, yeah. and wanting to focus on that aspect of Christ's life. Yes. Okay, you see. Yes, it's, I'm curious about it, too. I mean, like, what is it? What is it? I mean, you, you hear about it, you read about it. It is the central theme of, of uh, the faith of Christians. I mean, I, I wanted to find out about it in a, in a complete way, in a full way, and I began to read and, and uh, investigate. No studio would attach itself to this project when you first started shopping it around. No. Why not? I don't think it's, the, and I'm not sure. Well, they're scared of this material. The material, or was it the language? What do you think it was? Well, they didn't like the idea that it was, uh, that I was going to do it in um, uh, in dead languages. Um, that puts them off right there. I mean, you know, people would say, well, why don't you do it in English? We'll back it. And I said, well, no, I don't want to. Um, it bothered me that it was, uh, it would have bothered me if it was in this, some sort of vernacular. When did you make the decision that it was going to absolutely be in Aramaic and Latin? Oh, very early on. It was, there was no other way to do it for me. Um, I just, I wanted it to be, I wanted it to transcend language, you know. For the authenticity. You wanted to capture the authenticity of that moment. Authenticity is a good word, yes. I suppose that's about as close as we're going to come. I just wanted it to be something else. Um, and that I didn't want to have to depend on the spoken word. I mean, it's a visual art mm -hmm. film, and I wanted to take the verb away from it a little bit. Have it there, yeah. But um, 
to, um, to restrict the spoken word. You were more interested, it seems to me, in the visceral, you wanted a visceral reaction from the audience and you didn't want the words getting in the way. That's right, yes. Then why did you put the subtitles in? Ah, because they were very helpful. How so? Well, when I watched it back, I said, hmm, it needs a little help. I showed it with subtitles and without, and with, and with it was very effective. Uh, it was just really effective. And you said this was a career killer, this movie. This, it and is. And you've put your own money and your reputation on the line. Why do yeah, sure. that? Because I'm passionate about it. And because that's what art is. And that's what, and that's what um, making art is about. It's about sort of throwing it all out there. I think, um, um, and if the fur is not flying, you ain't doing nothing. I remember when you first came back from Matera, Matera, Italy. Tell me about your first trip there, because you were, you were kind of strapped for location. You were dying to find a location, and it wasn't happening. Yeah, we went to um, North Africa and all the usual hangouts <laughs> where, the, you know, where the locals get you, and they say, here it is, here's the, you know, and they take you to these places, and you say, I've seen that before. But uh, um, I, hadn't, I had seen Matera before, because uh, I think Pasolini put it in his film. Uh, but he didn't use it to its fullest advantage. What did you find there? A, a great location. I mean, it was like rich. Um, and, and we looked at it so many times and remapped it and walked it and looked at it and had old cameras on it. And I, I, I did a lot of location scouts there. It's a beautiful town. It's like 2,000 years old. And, and many of the, uh, uh, the, the lower levels are 2,000 years old. And uh, the, the upper levels are, are like caves kind of hewn out in the rock by... Um, uh, by hermits, by monks from the east, you know, they came and they settled there and they dug these caves and they did what's called reverse architecture and they dug out the stone and they, what they left in there were altars where they used to celebrate. So when you're looking at the, the hill that uh, we used for Calvary and the crucifixions, uh, underneath are chapels where, where the sacrifice was actually celebrated for years, right underneath the, the areas. Um, and there, there's still altars and frescoes there painted on the walls. Really? From, yeah, from these old hermits that lived in there. The ermiti, they call them. Talk to me about the cinematography, which you were looking for there, the, 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 the composition of the images themselves. You, when we were in Rome, you mentioned Caravaggio, that that was an influence. Why? Well, you know, as one looks at uh, great art, um, I don't know, it just... He, in particular, sometimes it was almost startlingly real, and it was always kinetic. It was always as if it was in motion for me, and it was violent, too. It was, um, um, you know, you're always seeing somebody yeah. getting their head cut off or... Right, or in chains or dragged or... Yeah, and I mean, the only way we know anything, Caravaggio did all this amazing religious art. I mean, if you go around the churches in Rome, there it is. It's everywhere in the, in the cathedrals, and it's tremendous, and he's kind of my favorite, but he's pretty dark. And pretty um, uh, and pretty violent, and it it is kinetic, and the way it's lit, the way his sense of light in his um, um, in his imagination when he did these pictures is just it's amazing. It's like uh, beautiful. Um, so we emulated that where we could. Your vision of Jesus is is really at odds with the history, the cinematic tradition of depicting this man. Sure. Yeah. Describe for me your Jesus, the way you saw him. The way I saw him? As a man born at that time into that culture, um, and just as, as, as real as possible, you know? He always has an effet air yes. in some of these other movies. Well, you yes. didn't want that. No, I didn't want him to be. I think he was, he was a workman, he was a, you know. But, but how do you capture the divinity? In, in that, and I think that's why you get that femininity in the, in the, in the acting, because they're trying to capture the divinity. Yeah. How did you avoid that, and why did you cast Caviezel? Caviezel? Well, he's a very masculine kind of guy, but there is something otherworldly about Jim. He's not quite with us, Jim. He's like, he's got some other, un, other world or unworldly knowledge that seems to um, envelop him like a glow, and um, that very presence I thought was a, a key thing is casting in that is somebody who emits that kind of light and he has a very good light coming out of him. Mm. Um, 
But that's just natural to Jim, and that's who he is. You know. Hardest film of your career? Without a doubt. In what way? Uh, physically, there's no rest. In the Thin Red Line, which was very hard, uncomfortable, uh, you know, there were moments where you walk around and Terry Malick would say, go over there and pick your gun up and look into the sunset. Physically, not so hard. This one is torture from the, from right from the beginning in all forms. If I'm on the cross, uh, you, you're in incredibly cold conditions. Yeah, tell me about the 15 days in a loincloth, essentially, in the freezing cold. Well, just, well, that's just on the crucifix. And we, that, that's just straight crucifix. We um, did uh, two weeks, this last week, 10 days of, of getting okay. on the cross. Uh -huh. So we had to shoot all that on a, uh, a set here at Chinichita in Rome. And the other part was down in Matera, and that was uh, um, on a, a, a cliff. And, you know, I, I've said, go put yourself across on the edge of the Grand Canyon and uh, the wind tunnel from the canyon just goes straight up that we're on kind of like a, the sheer a cake side. yeah and just comes up and phew, right over um, they will stick heaters on both sides of you but it's useless when the wind is uh, just blowing past you and when you're looking out at the and the in the distance and you know, there are you know a good 300 people there mm -hmm. and you see them shaking and they've got mittens and scarves and, and jackets on it I, I just uh, it, and there's nothing you can do because your arms are tied up. Mm -hmm. So they move the heaters closer, and you'll start to feel the heat. But when the wind slows down just a little bit, it fries your um, skin. Toasted tootsies. <laughs> so <laughs> so it, 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 uh, uh, I, I remember just going, so you don't want this movie to be made. <laughs> uh, you pulled your I mean, shoulder, too. Continually. Uh, separated my shoulder. Doing uh, what? Carrying when you were carrying the cross. Yeah, the, when when you're carrying the cross, um, is actual. It's not just the beam. The 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 Gasmus and Dismus, the two criminals, right. are both carrying a beam. And some theologians feel that he carried the whole darn thing, and um, which would made his passion a little bit different than anyone else's. Um, so Mel took you know pleasure in making that thing heavy. You couldn't make it too light, or it just wouldn't look right. Mm -hmm. And when I, I, I played basketball for years, and I bring that up because um, I, I, I just found it real important to do a lot of, um, you know, clean jerks, lunges, uh, deadlifts, and um, and do wall squats. And I couldn't have done it without it because uh, literally you're putting all the weight when you're on the cross, you're putting <laughs> all the weight on this leg and hooking this one over. And so all your weight goes into your uh, right quad, and you have to hold that for 10 minutes while your arms are, you know, hooked up. And what? How did they hook you up? Um, well, they, uh, there's a number of different, different ways. Uh, are you saying like when I'm... Yeah, physically, how are you being held up? I mean, I, I imagine they're not driving nails through your hands. He hasn't gone that far, has he? It, well, I mean, we can do a lot of things with special effects with, you know, digital in, in which this film is on. Um, but uh, we have a really uh, extraordinary makeup crew, and one of the best in the in the in the best in the business. And uh, um, I mean, some of it I don't even go into because I just think it's it takes away from the mystery of the film mm -hmm. um, of what we're doing. But they've built two sorts of platforms, and um, in between takes, I would. Uh, uh, I'd have to, I have to stay up there for most of the time, and they would just put the heaters on and try to, you know, keep keep me warm, um, because taking me off would take too long to, for the for the for the, for the setups. And so at one point I was on there for uh, uh, like an hour, and this is in, you know, uh, if you've known what wind chill feels like, this was, you know, 20 degree weather, nothing wrong. Yeah, with but wind chill, floor. you know, which drops the wind and and or drops the temperature and your your most of the time it was just keeping your core temperature up and switching from heat to cold and heat to cold that that fast I couldn't keep anything down so it was extremely hard to getting nauseous all the time and and you're also um, because the makeup is so severe you can't see out the right I can't see the right side of mm -hmm. my face mm -hmm. 
So everything's, you know, you're getting hyper focused out of the left eye. And, mm. it's, and then the makeup that you're wearing is all the skin is just ripped to shreds. So <laughs> if you've, all I can say is if you've ever had a sunburn, when you're going through the healing stage and you're itching, <laughs> put your arms up and want to itch every single part of your body and, and you can't. And it's just, it, so it's been a nightmare the whole, mm. whole, whole way through. And some nights I have to wear the entire makeup in bed. So they throw powder over me and I go to bed wearing the stuff and, mm. and I just don't sleep. Um, you, you itch all night. So. Why did you decide to do this film? How did it happen? Go back there and tell me how Mel Gibson decided to. You can turn your cameras off anytime you want once you get poor. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to turn. This is what they tuned in for. Right. The, um, uh, it's all started with, um, uh, I had a phone call from my agent saying that Steve McAvity, um, Mel Gibson's partner, wanted to meet with me on a film called Mavericks. What I've later found from Steve and, and uh, Mel was that was just a front. <laughs> <laughs> a ploy to get a ploy, you in the room. Well, to see what I was really like. Mm -hmm. So um, we uh, <clears throat> met at some picnic table and, and uh, up in Malibu, and we uh, uh, started talking. And uh, uh, we, it went on for like three and a half hours. And then uh, Mel finally brings up this story about this, what he's been thinking about for many years, and uh, <clears throat> how he had uh, found this book, and it was Anne Catherine Emmerich. And he goes, "You don't, you know how this guy really died?" I said, "Yeah." And he started, we, uh, and I just it hit me. I just said, "You want me to play Jesus?" Hmm. And I just interrupted him. He, he stopped and he looked at me. He goes, <laughs> "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. And in that moment, you know, you can slow the thoughts down in your head a million miles a second. And I kept thinking, oh man, it all comes down to this, you know, playing this. And it felt like I should. And I, and, and I said, okay. But I, I was scared in saying it. You were offered four other times to play this role, right? Three other times. This is the fourth time. Why this one? Why this one and not the others? It, you know, I, the other times that I was asked, I've, Afterwards, I felt guilty. I felt like my first response was right, and, and I just didn't feel right. I didn't want to make something that wasn't the truth. And I felt that the other ones weren't, uh, weren't there. And it, it, it had it, 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 I, I wanted to know. I asked Mel, I said, Mel, you had a lot of passion when you did Braveheart. Do you have at least that much for this? He goes, more than anything I've ever done. I mean, I have a sense you're going to go through the blades a few times on this one. But you think so? I bet. Julianne, diced? Yes. Ginsued? Ginsued, mm. chopped, and fricasseed. Fricasseed, oh good. I can hardly wait. <sighs> <sighs> if, what I, if what I'm hearing from my peers is true. Oh, shut up. I'm I know, you're I know. scaring me, Raymond. I'm not <laughs> trying to scare you. I just want to. All right. Oh, you know, hey, so what? You only live once. You're willing to take the shot. Yeah, you might as well get... It, it, it won't be boring. No, it won't be boring. It won't be boring. <laughs> and it hasn't been boring. But uh, we, as you see there, and you know, mm -hmm. I, I've said this time and time again when people have asked me, I don't think he anticipated anything like this fallout and the, and the enormous criticism that, that flew at this film mm -hmm. for a year. Mm -hmm. You were front page news for a year. Yeah. What did you think when that happened? Uh, well, uh, uh, do my job very well. I, at that point, I didn't want him worrying about me as an actor. I had to come and bring my A game every day, my A plus game. Mm -hmm. um, and you're dying. You, you all know. have the flu in that clip. Mel has he the flu. Sick. He's sick he as was a very, dog. Very sick. Um, and whatever he got, I got, and I got prop gave to him. But um, you know, that's when friendship. You, <laughs> that's friendship. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you're uh, trying to direct a film. Um, try to, uh, it's like fighting two wars, two mm -hmm. fronts. That's what was mm -hmm. happening. And mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was diverting his focus. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I would go in and, and say, don't worry about me. Just w whatever you have to do, I'll be fine. But don't be concern yourself with me. I'm okay. Just, you know, do the best you can here. What do you make of their charge? But then they say, <laughs> the, it, this movie could serve as a toxic recipe for religious hatred, could legitimize anti-Semitism. Will it? No. 
this is rubbish. This is absolute rubbish. This film is about faith, hope, love, and forgiveness. That's what it's about. Does this film attempt to collectively blame the death of Jesus on the Jewish people? This film collectively blames humanity on the death of Jesus. Now, there are no exemptions there. All right? I'm first on the line for culpability. I did it. Christ died for all men for all times. Including Jewish people. Yeah. I, I, they're part of the human race, <laughs> you know? And it's humanity that's culpable. I'm first on the line. I did it, okay? Um, we are all culpable with no exemptions. No exceptions. So it's not singling them out and saying, they did it. That's not so. We're all culpable. I believe we're all culpable. In fact, there's an argument, and this is a, a valid one. I think it's in the Council of uh, the Catechism of Trent that says, we're more culpable, in fact, because we know, and if we reject and by our transgressions crucify Christ, we are um, more responsible than those who may have been ignorant, who thought, well, he's not really the Messiah. He's like, a, you know. And artistically, you point the finger at yourself, don't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. That's my hand in there, sort of pounding the nail in. Um, left hand, sinistra, oh. the sinister hand. Do you think the real gripe here is with the Gospels? That's all. That's all I got there is the Gospels. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Now, they did a film called The Gospel According to John, but they didn't come under fire. Why? Why are they not under fire, and why am I under fire? I've only done what they've done. Because Mel Gibson didn't direct that picture. That's right. It's a very personal thing. Is this your most... People might go and see this. Oh, no! That's the whole thing. Is this your most personal film, in yes, your it is. opinion? Yeah. Why? It reflects my beliefs. And I've never done that before. Why not? Because I haven't had the opportunity to do it before. You think you'll do it again after what you've gone through on this? This? Yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm winning. <laughs> is this, they have no idea what stubborn means. Is this theme going to continue? You've been grappling with this good and evil, these, the big picture, the spiritual war, if you will. Braveheart, we were soldiers, signs, all of these, I would say, in some to ways. To a degree, yeah. Yeah. Give us glimpses of that inner struggle. You think this will continue for you as a filmmaker? Yeah. I don't know. Probably. You know, you have to, you have to talk about what you know about. I don't know about it. I'm no expert, but uh, you know, you can only um, put your own experience into your work. How that manifests itself, I have no way of knowing in the future. I don't know if I'll ever work again. You know, I've said that this is a career killer. Yeah. And. It, it could well be, but that doesn't matter because I don't care. Because this is more important, this message, yeah. this film. I think so, yeah. And it's, um, I'll, you know, put it out there, see what happens. What do you want people to come away with after seeing this movie? What do you want from your audience? To be affected by it, to believe it. Mm. Of course, they don't have to do any of those things, it's up to them. I want them to be moved by it, and I want them to think about it. Um, maybe to be inspired to read the rest of the Gospels, because it's a good book anyway. Uh, my intention was to get back to the basic message, you know, and show, there it is. What does that do to you? Do you think you've done it? Yeah, I, th I think I have. Gibson is said to be working on a sequel to his passion film. We will, of course, keep you posted on any news that emerges.